Getting good at data structures and algorithms helped me clear interviews at Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. But mastering DSA was not an easy task. I tried everything from books, courses, both free and paid ones, and I spent thousands of hours solving lead code problems. Looking back, I realized I wasted a lot of time on things that didn't help me get better at DSA at all. In this video, I will share tips that worked for me and that can help you master DSA more efficiently without feeling overwhelmed. I will talk about the important DSA topics for interviews, resources I found useful, and how to master a DSA topic from scratch. I will also share a revision strategy so that you don't forget the problems you have already solved. What are the must-know DSA topics for interviews? We can group DSA topics into three pillars, data structures, algorithms, and problem-solving techniques. Data structures are of two types, linear and non-linear. Linear data structures include arrays, linked lists, stacks, queues, hash tables. And non-linear data structures include trees, binary search trees, heaps, graphs, try, and union find. You should start with linear data structures before moving on to non-linear ones, since they are more complex. For algorithms, focus on sorting, binary search, bit manipulation, tree traversal algorithms including in-order, pre-order, post-order, and level order, graph algorithms including DFS and BFS, topological sort, and sort test path algorithms like Dijkstra and Bellman-Ford. And lastly, for problem-solving techniques, you should focus on two-pointers, sliding window, prefix sum, fast and slow pointers, divide and conquer, greedy algorithms, recursion, backtracking, dynamic programming, and top k elements. There are other topics like segment trees and fenwick trees, but they are rarely asked in coding interviews. It's good to know about them, but you don't need to study them deeply. In the beginning, focus on the most commonly asked topics. Also, having a good understanding of how to measure time and space complexity of algorithms will be very helpful in your journey to master DSA. One mistake I made that wasted a lot of my time was trying to learn many topics at once. Learning many topics at the same time can become overwhelming. So at the start, focus on one topic at a time. It makes learning easier and less stressful. You don't need to fully master a topic before moving on to the next one, but at least get to a point where you understand the ins and outs of that topic, how to implement it from scratch, and able to solve lead code easy problems related to that topic. What's the right order to learn DSA topics? The important thing to remember is that some topics depend on others. For example, if you don't understand recursion, you will struggle to solve tree-related problems. Here is the order I recommend. Start with linear data structures like arrays, linked lists, stacks, queues, and hash tables. Then learn popular algorithms and problem-solving patterns like two-pointers, sliding window, recursion, backtracking, sorting, searching, and bit manipulation. Next, study hierarchical data structures like trees, binary search trees, try, and heaps. After that, learn more complex algorithms like greedy and dynamic programming. Finally, study graphs and union find data structures. This is just my recommendation, but you can change it based on what you already know and what you prefer to learn. How to start learning a new topic? You can follow these steps to get a head start on a new topic. First, start with basics. Begin by learning what it is, how it's represented in code, different operations you can perform on it, and their time and space complexities. For example, if you're learning binary search trees, understand how it's represented and learn common operations like inserting a node, deleting a node, and searching for a node. Second, learn real-world applications. Data structures and algorithms are not just for coding interviews, they are used in real life too. For example, when you use Google Maps to find the shortest route to your friend's house, it uses graph data structure and shortest path algorithms like Directra. That's why, when you are learning, it's good to understand how these concepts are used in real life. This can help you see why data structures and algorithms are important, and it might make learning them more exciting. You can do a Google search or ask AI tools like ChatGPT to learn how a particular data structure or algorithm is used in real life. Next, use pen and paper. One of the best ways to understand DSA topics is to visualize them using pen and paper. Visualizing data structures and algorithms can help you understand and remember them better. Draw simple diagrams and write pseudocode to see how the data structure or algorithm works. For example, while learning about linked lists, draw nodes and pointers to see how nodes are connected and how operations like insertion and deletions are performed. Next, implement it from scratch. Once you understand how it works, code it out from scratch in your favorite programming language. Implementing it yourself reinforces your understanding and helps you grasp the underlying mechanics. For example, when you are learning about stacks, try implementing them using arrays or linked lists. Implement methods for push, pop, and peak operations. Next, learn in-bit libraries. In most interviews, you probably won't be asked to implement a data structure from scratch, but you will need to know how to use them to solve coding problems. Most popular programming languages come with built-in support for popular data structures and algorithms. For example, Python has this, 
sets and dictionaries and java provides array list hash map and tree set as part of the collections library so learn how to use these built-in libraries and the various methods each data structure offers and the last solve easy problems just reading about a topic or watching tutorials is not enough you need to practice coding problems related to the topic to build confidence and reinforce learning this practice helps you apply the concept you have just learned and solidifies your understanding after understanding the basics of a topic and its implementation try solving four to five easy problems on lead code related to the topic you are currently learning what are some good resources to learn dsa there are many great resources available online especially on youtube here are some resources that i personally found quite useful to build a solid foundation in dsa abdul bari's algorithm playlist william fisher's data structure and graphs playlist to sir roy's dynamic programming playlist and these two courses on coursera god algorithms 1 and algorithms 2 I have put these and more DSA resources in my GitHub repository called Awesome Lead Code Resources. You can find the link in the description. How to master a DSA topic? After you have learned the basics, you are ready to go deep. Here are a few tips to understand data structures and algorithms in depth. Number 1. Prioritize solving problems over theory. While understanding the theory is important in the beginning, the real learning happens when you apply that knowledge to solve problems. The more problems you solve, the better you will understand data structures and algorithms. So don't spend all your time watching tutorials. Once you understand a concept, you start solving problems related to it on lead code. If you want to learn about how to start lead code and use it effectively, you can watch this video. Next, challenge yourself. Getting good at DSA is like getting stronger at the gym. Lifting the same weights every day won't make you stronger. You need to slowly lift heavier weights to build muscles. Similarly, to improve at DSA, you should gradually go beyond your comfort zone and tackle harder problems. For example, if you can comfortably solve most easy problems, move on to medium problems. Number 3. Understand, don't memorize. When learning DSA, focus on understanding the underlying concepts and principles instead of just memorizing code or solutions. Memorizing may help you solve specific problems, but it limits your ability to apply your knowledge to new scenarios. It's okay if you need to look at the solution for a difficult problem, but try to understand why the solution works and then implement it by yourself. If you are having trouble understanding the answer, try drawing it out with a pen and a paper. Usually for challenging problems, there is a specific trick or coding pattern, knowing which makes the solution easier. So for every hard problem, ask yourself, what is that one thing knowing which made everything else easier? Next, think in patterns. One of the fastest ways to get better at DSA is to think in terms of patterns. Knowing these patterns can help you quickly identify the right approach to solve new problems and enable you to solve a large number of problems in lesser time. As you solve more problems, notice the techniques and approaches that come up often. Group similar problems together and find the common strategies used. Some of the common problem solving patterns are Two pointers. Used to solve problems involving arrays or linked lists, especially where you need to find pairs or triplets that satisfy certain conditions. Sliding window. Used for problems involving subarrays or substrings, particularly when you need to find the maximum, minimum or a specific condition within a fixed size window. Fast and slow pointers. Used for problems related to finding cycles in linked lists or arrays. Merge intervals. Used for problems involving patterns such as merging overlapping intervals and backtracking, which is used for problems involving permutations, combinations, and other scenarios where you need to explore all possible configurations. You can find more patterns in this GitHub repository called Awesome Lead Code Resources. If you want me to make detailed videos on these patterns, let me know in the comments. And make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss my new videos. How to retain what you have learned? Mastering DSA requires not only learning new concepts and solving problems, but also retaining that knowledge over time. For the problems that I couldn't solve in one go and had to look at the solution, I realized that I soon forgot how to solve those problems after a few weeks. Here are some tips to help you remember what you have learned. Number 1. Repetition When we learn something new, it goes into our short-term memory, but when we repeat it many times, it moves to our long-term memory. Therefore, repetition is important to transfer knowledge from short-term to long-term memory. By revising concepts and problems regularly, you reinforce your understanding and make it easier to recall the information later. So regularly visit problems you found challenging and try to solve them again without looking at solutions. Here is an effective approach I followed for the problems I couldn't solve in the first attempt. On lead code, you can create lists. Make two lists, revision 1 and revision 2. If you can't solve a problem on your first attempt and need to look at the solution, put it in the revision 1 list. After a few weeks, try to solve problems in the revision 1 list. If you can solve them on your own, move them to the revision 2 list. If not, leave it on the revision 1 list. A few weeks later, Try to solve the problems in the revision tool list. If you can solve it by yourself, well done. You have got it. Remove it from the list. And next, bookmark anything important. Having quick access to high quality resources saves time and helps you revisit important concepts and solutions. So use browser bookmarks or tools like Google Drive, Notion, 
to save links to useful articles, tutorial, and problem solving guides. You can also tag and organize bookmarks by category for easy access. You can find my most important resources in the GitHub repository I mentioned earlier. And finally, be consistent. Learning DSA takes time, and the only way to improve is to keep working at it. Some topics might take weeks or months to master, so be patient with yourself. And it's normal to feel stuck or frustrated when solving a challenging problem or trying to understand a complex topic. Just keep going. If a problem seems too hard, take a break and then try again. Set a goal based on how much time you want to devote to your preparation and practice regularly, even if it's just one or two problems every day. If you enjoyed this video, you will also like my newsletter where I write articles on important topics related to coding, DSA, and system design. You can subscribe it at blog.algomaster.io.